Hello everyone, Greg Bennett here and welcome to today's presentation on the Greg Bennett Continental Series Acoustic, brought to you of course by those wonderful folks at SAMIC. Today I'm just going to take you through this guitar starting at the tip of the headstock and working all the way down to the end pin. The headstock is an interesting part of the guitar because most people uh, from a production or a design standpoint rarely see it as an opportunity to improve the performance of the guitar and it really does have some profound effects. You'll notice on most of our guitars that the headstock is quite a bit smaller and there's a reason for that. When you reduce the size of the headstock you actually reduce the resonant surface and what that means is if there's less headstock up there resonating or vibrating or moving it's it's pulling less energy off the string and by doing that you actually get a string that has a hotter attack, a better sustain and just generally is more powerful. Also, uh, coupled with the fact that we cock that headstock back quite a bit, that alone gives you tremendous downward bearing pressure from the string as it contacts the nut and the idea with that is that the more pressure you have at that point, the, the more difficult it is for energy on the string to pass that point. Well, when you make the headstock smaller and couple it with that angle, what happens is the distance from the nut to the machine head is also reduced and that almost exponentially further increases that downward pressure and makes the string even hotter. You'll also note that we, um, our machine heads converge rather than flare out and that ensures a nice uh, reasonably straight string path through the nut so you don't get that binding effect. And uh, uh, you'll also notice uh, by being smaller, it's lighter, it's just more comfortable, it's not quite as, as neck heavy. On the machines, um, I'm really proud of these. these. We use Grover machine heads, which just are an incredibly uh, professional gear. I think it's a 13 or 14 to 1 ratio. But I also like them because they're very soft to the touch, there's no harsh edges, and just the sort of round, curvy design really plays into the line study for the guitars. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, even on the simplest thing like the logo and the signature, we use a laser cut gold foil. There's no uh, decals, there's no silk screening. It just looks really, really rich. And you'll also notice that even on our least expensive guitars, some of which we do in a satin finish, the face of that headstock is always gloss. Okay, moving along down to the neck, uh, the nut is uh, a 1 and 11 sixteenths, which is a real traditional width. and. Uh, the neck is also an area that can, that can help enhance the performance of the string because if you think about it, this neck is this sort of structural member that it literally is part of the platform that the string sits on and if you have a greater rigidity or stiffness to that neck, what that means is that every time you hit the string, the neck isn't acting like a shock absorber pulling energy off the string and it's kind of a fine line you walk between enough depth uh, to get that strength enough mass and also a nice width that allows you to be accurate with your playing. Um, we use a real traditional um, fret wire, it's kind of thin like uh, a lot of the vintage guitars and uh, since the mechanics of an acoustic are so different than an electric, it just feels a lot better um, based on how people usually play. Uh, the neck itself is mahogany. Uh, which is again real traditional. It's a great tone wood, uh, but still really, really tough and, and adds to the structural integrity of the guitar. We use a rosewood fingerboard on this instrument, which uh, rosewood is a really dense, hard wood and also can enhance the performance of the string. And again, from the proximity effect, it's not pulling energy off the string. We use a, a diamond snowflake inlay, which is really, really traditional and, uh, and cap that off with white binding. And finally, um, on our cutaway versions, we use a French heel, which I really love. It's, it creates a broader seat for the neck to the body, and, and when you couple that with a really nice uh, hefty neck block inside, you get great contact to the body, and what happens is that strength, that rigidity, allows the energy from the string to transfer more efficiently to the top of the guitar, so you get more volume and a more responsive instrument. As we get down to the body of the guitar, I want you to know too, I, I always like to round off the bottom of the fingerboard and sort of it matches, excuse me, matches the contour of the sound hole. And it's interesting, uh, as you get used to this treatment, when you look at guitars where the neck uh, treatment is square across the bottom, you, you start to wonder, why didn't they finish the guitar? Uh, and you'll also note around the sound hole, all the guitars, every model we make, has this abalone type rosette around it. Um, on this particular guitar, 
um, I opted for cedar, and cedar's a fantastic wood. Um, just to give you the difference, the spruce top, that wider wood that you'll see also, um, has a really nice base uh, low end response and a really nice primary brightness to it. Where cedar differs is this. It is more biased towards the low mids, which is really musical and really pretty. And also, it doesn't have quite the primary high end, in other words, that sharp brightness, but it has these fantastic harmonics that just sort of rain down on it. So you get this, this wonderful sort of delicate jangle and uh, uh, great for finger picking and, uh, or if you have a, a, more, a, a softer voice or a more intricate style, it just is really tremendous for that. Continuing on, uh, we use a rosewood bridge, which again, just a really durable hard wood because think about this, this is a structural member. It's not about the tone in the rosewood, it's about transferring the string energy to the top. Uh, the one thing that we always are so picky about too is neck angle to the body because that allows you to have a bit higher saddle. And that saddle, if you think about it, acts like a lever on the top of the guitar. And also, if you like really low action, it gives you enough saddle that you can have your, your local repair guy, and I underline your local repair guy, uh, lower that saddle and bring the action down even further. It's obviously a traditional pin bridge. Uh, sides and back, we use rosewood on this guitar, and so um, that rosewood gives you a really um, a lot of heft in the low end, a lot of low end bass power. It, it also has a lot of brightness, but it usually gets so much bass that people aren't aware of what they're actually hearing, and your ears are really subjective. But you get a lot of nice bass, low end power, very rich sound, and when you couple that with that cedar top, with the low mids, that more delicate, articulation and those harmonics, the combination is really just amazing. And in fact, on this guitar, uh, we round off the package by making it an OM, which stands for orchestra model. It's a smaller body. And what happens with these smaller bodies, you do, you do give up, you have to sacrifice a little bit of bass, because again, think about it, the bigger the internal, uh, the size of this cavity, the more bass you're gonna produce, but, uh, the people that want to have a really clean, well-articulated, really well-defined sound, finger pickers, uh, bluegrass guys with really fast, um, that play a lot of fast runs, they just love that definition. For the electronics, for those of you who are playing out or recording and, and you want to amplify your guitar, we've, we've really um, had a long, uh, wonderful relationship with Fishman. And, uh, uh, he originally sort of wrote the book on these vibration sensitive systems. The pickup itself sits under the saddle right at the heart of the guitar and the idea is with a vibration pickup that you're literally picking up the vibration of the wood and it's and uh, we put it in the saddle because it's about the best place to control feedback which is that sort of uncontrolled howling or loop. Uh, seems to work best under there. And the active electronics are really tremendous. There's a four band graphic which, go, which handles lows, mids, highs, and then what we call brilliant, which is sort of your harmonic register, which is uh, what gives you that sparkle and then a volume control. And uh, for those of you who are new to this, uh, they call that a four band graphic. And here's the reason, it's four bands because they take all the frequencies from the lowest to the highest and divide them into four groups, low, mid, high, and brilliant and a band is just a group of frequencies. Uh, four band graphic because these controls are what they call sliders or faders rather than working in a circle or in a rotary uh, fashion, they work in a straight line. So when you set your bass, mid, high, and so on, you get sort of a graphic picture. And EQ is just an abbreviation for equalization which is fancy for tone control. So that's a wonderful system. And the end pin, your, your cable just connects out the back. Uh, this series, this Continental series, also comes in a dreadnought and a cutaway dreadnought if you want a big, which is a larger size guitar for a bit more natural acoustic power. But if you want great articulation, great clarity, uh, with a really wonderfully warm uh, sound, and again, coupled with that bass power, this is a tremendous uh, model to look into, an OM8CE. And once again, thank you so much for your attention, and uh, can't wait to hear from you guys once you get these in and try them in the store.